booktube it's peg i am back at the history shelf it is friday it's been a long week for everyone and uh hey hope you're doing okay as my my dog is now awake she always seems to come alive when i turn on the camera say i you know want to make sure that you guys just don't think all i do is buy books i wanted to make a video to just kind of show books i have read recently um a lot of times i don't show you everything just because i uh i have a lot of uh, different books that i'm commissioned to write reviews for um but i i am able to show you the books i just can't you know go into a full-fledged uh, full-throated um, review but i'm going to show you a few books today or a couple books today that i can link i'll link my written reviews below so you can it'll take you straight there how about them apples so what have i been doing i've been trying to get the house well not really trying too hard i am today like i am on fire to get out of this town home and get a bigger house um as books are coming in i'm noticing i just i'm like why am i even unboxing and trying to find shelf space because we want to move so <laughs> I think I'm just going to start moving the boxes into the garage on the sh on the shelving units because um, I want to get the heck out of here. It's time. It's time. So we are going to be working hard this weekend and getting like photos taken of the place and um, just seeing what our options are and get the ball rolling. I don't know if you can hear that squeaking and that is the recycled van out front so perfect um but hey let's talk about what i have been reading been kind of stressed out i think i mentioned that in my last video as the entire country has been so you know along with the deadlines i had to meet for certain books and book reviews i just said you know what i'm taking time to go through my journal reading which has lapsed and i've been like a year behind on many of my quarterlies which for quarterlies is not so bad because it only means i'm like three or four things behind but i did want to say that i recently subscribed to um the tls times literary supplement and i just have been enjoying the heck out of it um they get they get here i mentioned in my last video they get here a little delayed um and i missed one but they did resend me the October 9th issue. Um, I'm finishing up October 2nd. And it's funny, they are, uh, they reviewed a book that I just recently reviewed for... Goldie? Are you okay? All right, she's got a little cough. You okay? I might have to pause the video. Um, they reviewed a book that I just reviewed for Historical Novel Society. It's coming out in their Historical Novels review soon, but they reviewed The Blind Light by Stuart Evers. Now, some of these, these copies I've already passed along to my sister, who likes to read a lot of fiction and contemporary fiction and historical fiction. So I would hold the book up. I, I think I did in a bit video long ago. But I've already passed it along, but that's one of the major books that I've, I've recently, or in the last few months, have read and wrote a review for. But anyway, I'm reading the October 2nd issue of TLS to catch up, and then I have the October 9th they just sent me, and then I have the October 16th. Still do not have the October 23rd. <laughs> uh, they're delayed, but I still read them, and I do enjoy the letters. I know Steve had called out the letters uh, uh, a few times in how the 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 back and forth and the, the you know the tit for tat that goes on there is quite amusing so i've been reading tls um also going back through and trying to catch up on my new criterion which i'm ashamed to say i'm like a year behind but some of these essays are just timeless they're evergreen um, I'm, re I'm reading this one from september of last year um and it's all about uh, Alex Alexander Schultz and Eitzen, um, talking about the Gulag Archipelago um, and how I'm not done reading it. It's a great long essay and I just love these things. It's like six pages long. Just really, I love new criterion for this kind of stuff. Um, but making the point that the Russians, um, 
through their literature, they also tell history, obviously, but um, it's like, does the literature come first or the history? And uh, so it's just really a really interesting take on, you know, how Russian literature is the end all be all to Russia and to most of the world who love, you know, Russian literature. Um, but how, how historiography both informs and, um, you know, stands on its own as a literature piece, you know, it's like, it, it's funny. It's like how Western people, let me see here. They had a really interesting way of phrasing it. Uh, if Americans want the truth about a historical period, we turn to historians, not novelists. But in Russia, it is novelists who are presumed to have a deeper understanding. Tolstoy's War and Peace contradicted existing evidence, but for over a century now, it is his version that has, has been taken as correct. Um, the reason is that great writers, like prophets, see into the essence of things. And so Solzhenitsyn undertook to reach a proper understanding of the Russian Revolution by writing a series of novels about it, The Red Wheel. Um, so, and it just goes on into more and more uh, detail and uh, fleshes that out. And of course, now I, I have the Red Wheel uh, trilogy on my to be, TBR. Anyway, so I'm enjoying reading the new Criterion. And I, so I just said, you know what, I'm going to go back into these archives here and catch up on the things that I've missed. And it, it has given me, uh, it's been a balm for my soul. So I highly recommend the new Criterion. We have an arts, theater, music section, as well as uh, essays on everything. Um, it's just a really heady uh, uh, magazine, journal. And of course, I've been catching up on my uh, reading of Claremont Review of Books. I love it for the reviews. Uh, they are There are a few essays throughout. This one was um, from last year as well, but... So the more political pieces are dated, and that's okay, because I'm really over political crap. <laughs> but I love it as far as the essays and the book reviews go. Um, so, oh, boy, I was reading a, a great book review on... Uh, this was pretty good. I think uh, David Murphy might have appreciated this essay. Hayek's Tragic Capitalism. That's an essay, as an example. Um, they had a great section, and it, this perfect timing, too, because I'm actually doing a buddy read starting November 15th with Patrice for the Douglas, um, Frederick Douglass biography by David Blight. And so this one had a, a, um, a book review uh, by Alan, Alan Gelzo, who I love, Civil War historian and just general historian. Turn that light on there. Um, he was reviewing like three of these books, and one of them is the one I'm going to start reading. So, uh, just in the, traipsing through these large journals, and here's the thing, you know, they take a while to read because the Claremont Review of Books, big broadside, right? Okay. Each issue, and it's, which is fitting for a quarterly, is like 115 pages. So that's like a small book in itself. Um, and I usually read them cover to cover. I might skip a couple of things, but um, yeah. And so I've got a little backlog of about four that I need to, to, to get caught up on. <laughs> um, in addition to my other um, magazines that come in, but uh, mostly I've been catching up on New Criterion, Claremont Review of Books, staying as current as I can on TLS, really been enjoying the journal and magazine reading the last couple of weeks. Um, not feeling like forced to read something, but just reading what I want to read, you know. Um, and I know I'm forgetting another journal that I'm currently, I think first things, oh, Commentary Magazine. Yeah. The October issue did not get to me, and I'm a subscriber, did not get to me until October 28th. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> you know? They have already are promoting their November issue, and I'm like, I haven't even read your October. Um, so, got to catch up. I got to read October's now, but... All right, well, let's move on to some of the big books I've read recently. Whoa! There we go. Just to show you that I'm reading them. Um, 
The first one was a, a book that I was commissioned to write a review for, for Book Browse Review, and which has just been um, uh, posted online. And for a limited time, non-members of Book Browse Review can read my full review as, long, as well as my Beyond the Book article that I wrote for it. But this was a fantastic book. So I'm, just, I'm not going to go into a lot of it here. The book review is linked below if you want to check it out. This is The Quiet Americans, Four CIA Spies at the Dawn of the Cold War, A Tragedy in Three Acts by Scott Anderson, who also wrote uh, Lawrence in Arabia. Um, it's quite a big book. Uh, See, it's about 475 pages, but boy, um, it didn't feel like it. I really, it was a page turn. It was so well written. But anyway, uh, just keep this very cursory. Um, it was about four particular people. It was uh, Michael Burke, Frank Weisner, Peter Sitchell, and Edward Lansdale. And as we know, Max Boot wrote a, a very large book, The Road Not Taken, about um, the career of Edward Lansdale and how his, you know, interactions with the people in Southeast Asia really influenced, <laughs> oh, there goes Boomer, my baby, um, influenced the events uh, that led to Vietnam. So I'm interested in reading Max's, Max's, Max Boots books. Why do you have to have such a hard name, Max? <laughs> I'm interested in reading Max Boots books next. You know what I'm trying to say, but anyway, this was great. I gave it five stars and my review is linked below if you're interested. So that one was um, on my docket. Uh, at the same time that I was going through that, about halfway through that book, I started reading um, Black Spartacus, uh, which I had told Steve Donahue I would write a review for Black Spartacus for Open Letters Review, which I have, and it's been print, uh, posted and um, you can read it. The link is below to Open Letters Review. This is about, this is the epic life of Toussaint L'Overture by Sudhir Hazarasingh. Um, tell you what, it was another winner. I'm just going to say that. I won't go into a lot of detail because I've written about it in the review, which you can see at Open Letters Review. Um, but this one has made me want to uh, compare and contrast this one with another biography that was written shortly before this one came out, maybe a few years before, um, which takes a more critical look at L'Ouverture. This one was definitely, um, uh, it, it was super um, pro L'Ouverture. And I, I have to say, I, I, I'm i intrigued as, as heck by this guy and uh, his life and um, his, his intellectual um, uh, passions, his, uh, he, he was a very, um, Played his cards uh, close to his vest, and uh, he was a very, very uh, inspiring man who also cultivated a sen you know, his 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 reputation um, very cunningly. And um, but uh, a brave leader and a wonderful military leader, uh, was very skilled tactically, um, and had to face a lot of very strong armies. And, but anyway, this book. If you get a chance to get it at your library, or you can request it, or pick it up once it's out in paperback. This came out this year, only a couple months ago, I think. But, uh, wow. Loved it. Loved it. My review is linked below as well. So, um, I had a, it, was a, it was a great opportunity to, to read and review this. Um, the bibliography itself gave me more reading material. Um, I learned about another book that was written in the 1930s by C.L.R. James called The, the Black uh, Jacobins, or Jacobins. Um, and uh, gosh, it was it was at Bargain Booklet or bookoutlet.com and, and I, oh, I, oh, it was in my cart and then it was like gone, we were out of stock. But um, a lot of the material from this book, um, it, was a, it was a main source one of the major sources, but I mean, he's, he, he discovered a lot of new material that shed light on Toussaint's uh, character, his, um, his intellectual curiosity about things, his, his, his uh, commitment to French um, Republican revolutionary ideals. I mean, it was just a fascinating book. Anyway, check out the review at Open Letters Review below. Fiction-wise, well, let's, I'll come back to fiction. I'll end on a lighter note. Um, 
This little volume I signed up to write a review for for the next Saver and Scroll journal. But wow, it is a slim volume. And I can't say much because I'm writing the review for the journal. So, uh, but I just finished reading uh, When Reagan Sent in the Marines, The Invasion of Lebanon by Patrick J. Sloyan. Tiny little volume. It seems like it warrants a lot more. Uh, and then the type is just very wide space. So, um, yeah, not as crazy about this book. And I will detail that in my review. Um, I'll tell you about it maybe after it's it's published. But um, I didn't I didn't rate it very highly on Goodreads. So, hey, if you want to follow me on Goodreads, I'll include my uh, my link below. So these are like three major books that I've written or about to write a review on. There you go. Um, so those are done. Oh, but you know, a lot of books cross the desk here at the history shelf. And um, there's always more that I will be reviewing. And so I just thought I'd show you these journals and things that I've been reading just for things that bring me joy and books bring me joy too as well but sometimes you just want to read a journal and or a mat you know the TLS and just drink a cup of tea and and know that it's just you and your thoughts and you don't have to report them back to anyone <laughs> um, but yeah I, I think another video I'll show you I'll be reading at least three new historical fiction novels that will be um, are coming out or have just come out um, th um, I'll be reviewing three historical novels for the next issue of my reviews are due December 15th for historical novels review um, one I'm reading right now it's kind of a historical not you know fictional mystery new first in a series and then um, uh, one is a very interesting very large novel called Band of Sisters I'll show you the book next time uh, about the Smith girls, you know, the Smith College women go to, to war. It's a World War One novel. And it's about a bunch of women friends who join up to be nurses in World War One. So that should be a fun read. And then another one, which is a another historical uh, fiction mystery novel. So <sighs> I'm doing a lot, you guys. Um, I'm really active with Book Browse Review, and then I'm part of their First Impressions um, book club, and I, I give early takes on some of the books that they are offering, um, or they highlight on the Book Browse um, website. And uh, one of them is a, a brand new book in a series of books about um, a Polish queen. So and again, historical fiction and, and it's right up my alley. Obviously it's a history shelf. I enjoy mostly nonfiction in history, but I also like to read history, historical fiction. So that is something that I will show you very soon. But as far as like, you know, you know, I like just straight up mysteries and detective or, you know, stuff like that. So I finally finished reading Elizabeth George's A Suitable Vengeance, which is the fourth in the series. Um, uh, so I'm ready to, you know, to take on number five next, but this one was a prequel of sorts. It takes you back to, you know, if you're a fan and you don't want any spoilers, maybe mute me right now, but, um, it kind of takes you into the relationships between, um, Inspector Lindley, um, Simon St. James, Deborah, Lady Helen, <laughs> and just there was a love triangle um, that when you first start the series, they hint at, but this one takes you back and kind of shows how the how people came to where they did. I hope you, okay, we got more movement upstairs. This is why I need a house. You know, it's just so loud here. Um, how people came to where they did in their relationships. And uh, anyway, the mystery itself is pretty good. Again, it's very ahead of its time. This was probably written in the late 80s. Uh, no, 1991. But I mean, there's elements of like cross-dressing in here and uh, drug use. And it was just really, it was really ahead of its time. I think I hear Martine, she might be coming. But anyway, so I finished reading that. Um, what else, guys? 
<laughs> oh, you might be wondering who's on my my uh, my shirt here. Um, no, it is not David Murphy. Uh, it would be a strange place for him to be. Um, he is missing. He is missing. Um, <laughs> we put out the 411 on David Murphy. Uh, you know what? The guy is... Uh, I knew we'd see less of him once, you know, he's really uh, into his... Uh, his uh, his big, uh, his big banking job, or whatever that is. I don't know. I'm just kidding, David. We miss your 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 videos. Um, but hey, I know I I know what you're saying. I've taken a little bit of a break as far as uh, I think I average one video a week, maybe a little bit longer than that, because I'm trying to get more reading in because I've got so many books. But no, this is Franz Ferdinand. Um. It's my historical shirt. And it basically says, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> uh, you gotta have a sense of humor. Um, yeah. So, I think that's pretty much my updates as far as reading. I, uh, so now I'm reading, uh, in addition to the stuff I'm commissioned to read for Historical Novels Society and Book Browse, um, for this channel, I'm I've started reading in this, and I know I'm behind on that, and I do apologize for that. But I am reading now *Death at the Edges of Empire* um, by Shannon Bontrager, and very early pages, but the premise is very, very uh, engaging, and I'll, I'll re I, I will reveal more as I progress. Um, this month as well, I am reading uh, because this has just come out in paperback. Um, so I'll give you a, uh, an, a little overview of this book. Once I get into it, it's very detailed. It's very detailed, but this is war junk. Munitions disposal and post-war reconstruction in Canada. By Alex Sushin. Um, and the other book I am reading is one I, I feel bad that it, it just, it got pushed to the side with a bunch of other things that had to get done but wow, I just kind of lost myself in it last night. Um, and the book is upstairs, so I can't show you. But it's Phoenix Rising by Colonel Keith uh, Nightingale about his role um, trying at the Joint Task Force to try to get the hostages out of Iran in the, in, I think it's 1979. Um, and how these special operations uh, forces kind of came to be from that trial and error of that whole rescue attempt but um wow i just i can't wait to review it and i will review it for this channel because uh, i like the way this book is done um it's like you are there and it's present tense and it's just it's riveting and you're just getting it's like you're getting a behind the scenes i it's it's um it's must read military history from someone who was there and part of me is wondering was this I'm sure the book was cleared by, you know, uh, the military. I mean, it's just like, wow, can you say that? What's going on here? Um, but Phoenix Rising by Colonel, uh, retired um, uh, Colonel Keith Nightingale, Lieutenant Colonel, wait, Colonel Keith Nightingale, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long week. Um, and then, of course, I'll be reading, um, I'm going to start reading the Frederick Douglass biography for a buddy read on November 15th. So that's kind of where I've been at. I think I might be even forgetting. Oh, wait. Well, I mentioned a bunch of fiction books I, I read recently. Uh, the Blind Light uh, by Stuart Evers. And I wrote a small write-up for that. Um, and uh, all I can say is I don't know what the... But I don't know... I don't know what the Ballyhoo is about. I, uh, I have to honestly say I did not like the book. And it was over 500 pages that I had to get through. Uh, sometimes writers get a little too fancy. They want to try some, um, you know, literary trick of, uh, repeating words over and over again uh, to emphasize something. And it just, to me, it just fell flat. It just, it was, there's too much experimentation going on in the writing I didn't care for. And in the end, there was no one really likable in this book. I mean, none of the characters that I, I just, there was no one I had any slight, well, there was, I had a little bit of slight empathy for the wife, 
when, but then it was just like, ugh, everything seemed to go off the rails. And at the end, I'm like, I really don't care what happens to any of you. I don't. So, yeah, maybe I'm just not meant to grade uh, contemporary uh, literature or fiction because it just did not, it was not my cup of tea at all. Let's see what my sister says. I, I gave her the book. She goes, did you like it? I said, no. <laughs> I said, but maybe you'll see something in it that I didn't. But um, no, no. I, I say thumbs down to the blind light by Stuart Evers. I'm sorry, Stuart. Um, <laughs> I should, you know, if I had my phone, I could look at my Goodreads. And then I read a book, um, Remember Me, by Mario Escobar about the... Um, Spanish Civil War. That was a kind of a nice little feel-good, bittersweet novel about the children that were sent to Mexico during um, the Spanish Civil War and so that they could escape the, uh, the ravaging armies of Franco and, um, and how they were. Some of them were reunited, but most of them weren't um, with their families. Uh, so that was kind of a, like a heartwarming little novel, but uh, maybe a little too saccharine sweet for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, uh, just been reading a lot of historical novels, um, trying to fit in my mysteries and then just reading big books on history and writing reviews on them. But anyway, okay. So this is a Friday reads and what I've been reading, what I'm currently reading and will be picking up soon. Um, and now I need to make standby for another very long book, uh, books in the mail video. I've received a lot of books from publishing uh, publishers and thank you very much. Um, but wow, don't know where to put everything. <laughs> um, plus I just want to start all of them. I just want to start reading every single book. Um, but you know, you got to do them one at a time one at a time. So anyway, guys, tell me what you're reading. Tell me what you think of anything here. Again, I will link my book reviews below in the comment or the, uh, the description box. And uh, until next time, booktube, I hope you have a great Friday. And uh, yeah, stay, stay healthy, stay sane, and we'll get through this. All right. Take care. Bye.